officer or this institution, I am not trying to take you away from your religion. No religion mandates meat eating. The golden rule states, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Animals qualify as others, and thou shalt not kill. The four most important yet most ignored words in all religious teachings. There's not an asterisk next to that commandment saying, unless you walk on all fours, have fur, feathers, horns, beaks, or gills. You can keep your friends, your politics, and your patriotism, still watch your favorite TV shows and listen to your favorite music, even if it's Ted Nugent. Your questions until then. In the meantime, I have some rhetorical questions for you. Is slavery, owner, victim, profit, domination, exclusive to the human race? Have blacks, Jews, women, and children been the only victims of this atrocity? Have not cows been enslaved? What about pigs, chickens, turkeys, fish, sheep? If they're not enslaved, then what are they? Free? Can slavery have a victim that is neither human nor animal? Have not the oceans, the forests, the earth itself become victims of ownership too? And what about a slaughterhouse? House of slaughter. Slaughterhouse. Do you really think there's such a thing as humane slaughter? Exactly what is your definition of humane? Besides psychological and physical abuse, torture, dismemberment, and murder, what else do you think happens to animals inside of a slaughterhouse? You think they get belly rubs and tushy slaps? And if you think there's such a thing as humane slaughter, I'm curious, do you also think there's such a thing as humane rape, humane child molestation, humane slavery, how about a humane holocaust? In fact, what is your definition of a holocaust? Is it a massacre of human beings? or a massacre of innocent beings. I thought it was innocent getting involved. I understand that we're all on a journey in life. We all have different likes and dislikes, different nationalities and religions too. But there's one thing that we need to have in common with each other and that's peace. Genuine compassion and genuine peace for our planetary companions. <laughs> Contrary to political, and religious dogma, animals do not belong to us. They are not commodities. They're not property and they're not inanimate, stupid objects who can't think and feel. That Descartes Cartesian way of looking at animals like they're machines, it is outdated and quite frankly 100% insane. Because if we all understand that animals can use their eyes to see, ears to hear, noses to smell, mouths to eat, legs to walk, feathers to fly, fins to swim, genitalia to procreate, bowels to defecate. I'm always perplexed that most people don't believe that they can also use their brains to think, feel, be rational, be aware, and be self-aware. Am I supposed to believe that every body part on an animal functions just like it's supposed to? Except the brain? Those lies are thick. The propaganda from the animal abusers is enormous. I mean, when was the last time you turned on TV and saw a commercial for shiitake mushrooms? People singing and dancing down the streets having a good time eating mushrooms? How about alfalfa sprouts? Quinoa, it's a seed. Radishes, raspberries, tofu. You don't see that stuff advertised on TV. What do you see instead? Have some more meat, have some more cheese, have some more cheese on your meat. Meat, cheese, double cheese, extra cheese. And how about a little more cheese with your meat? Have some more cow's milk, have some more eggs. And then what do you see interspersed between those advertisements? Not feeling so well? 
Need to see a cancer specialist? How about a heart doctor? Need some Lipitor? Zocor, Crestor, Plavix. Need some diet pills? How about some energy drinks? Some K.O. Pectate? Tums? Pepto-Bismol. You've been duped. They're killing you, they're killing the animals, and they're killing this planet. And those blinders are on nice and tight along the way. Who taught us to be so mean and nasty and vicious and hateful or indifferent towards animals when they used to be our friends? These are innocent beings who have done nothing wrong to us. Because I'm pretty sure we can all agree in at least one thing right now, that hatred in its purest form is a learned behavior. Racism, sexism, heterosexism, anti-Semitism, misogyny. These are all learned behaviors. When kids are two, three, four years old playing on a playground, they could care less about the color of their friend's skin or their religious background. I don't think there's any doubt that hatred in its purest form is learned. So speciesism is no different. This could be a new word to a lot of people. It's up here on the screen, right below vegan. It's the word species with an ism attached to it. And I want to define this word as the unethical, unprincipled point of view that the human species has every right to exploit, enslave, and murder another species. And all because we believe that our species is so more special, so more superior than the other ones. We're the only ones that count, and we're the only ones that matter. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but that line of thinking, that thought process, that is the basis of all forms of discrimination. One group saying and thinking they're more special than everyone else and they proceed to exploit them, oppress them, deny them their right to be free. They treat them like property. They enslave them in many cases. And in many other cases, they murder them with premeditation and without penalty. And understand something essential about discrimination. It is never okay to be picking and choosing which forms of discrimination to be opposed to. Which ones to say are evil, racism, and which ones to say are okay, speciesism. Discrimination is evil on its foundation, or it's not. You cannot have this one both ways. It doesn't work like that. I, th I think this type of behavior is inexcusable and unbecoming of a species that claims to understand right from wrong. The animals have not done one single thing to us to deserve the wrath and the cruelty that we hurl on them. And I hope you all understand what I'm offering you today. When you hit the door after my speech, are you aware that for the first time ever, you can now directly participate in ending a massacre? instead of sitting around and paying lip service to all the massacres and all the problems that are always going on on this planet. What is so frustrating to me when I travel this country doing around 250 lectures every year to some 7,500 students is that everybody talks a good game. I've noticed that people are quite the smooth talkers when it comes to peace and compassion. I mean, people always want to tell me Never show me. Just tell me how peaceful they are because of what they believe in or what makes them sad. Hey, Gary, I believe in God, and I believe in angels, and I pray all the time. And those earthquakes, the one in Chile and Haiti, oh, that was so sad. And no shit, it was sad. Since when does feeling sad about an obvious tragedy or believing in something make the world a better place or make somebody a good person. And listen, folks, I am not trying to dog you out when I talk like this. I'm not. I'm just not a politician. I'm not a bullshit artist. I don't know how to schmooze people, as you can see. It's kind of beyond me. I hope you appreciate my honesty and my genuineness today. But when you sit back in the comfort of your living room, and you start condemning atrocities elsewhere, that is pure, unadulterated lip service. 
That's the definition of lip service. But veganism, this is now a chance to actually walk the compassionate talk that everybody's always talking about. This is your chance to show others how truly peaceful you are. This is a chance for a personal revolution, to leave your mark on this planet by causing the least amount of harm possible. Always being vegan. Now come on, what's the argument for not causing the least amount of harm? Inconvenience? Indifference, apathy, selfishness. I want you to know, I don't live in fantasy land. I'm well aware that animals are suffering and dying just because we're here on the planet with them. We build homes through their habitat. We pollute their environment, destroy their habitat. Is there a reason we have to maximize the suffering? and maximize the cruelty and the death that they already endure by eating them on top of it all? You want to talk about pouring salt into somebody else's womb. 98%, and I repeat this stat, 98% of animals who are abused and killed on this planet are abused and killed by the meat, dairy, and egg industries. This is where all the harm is taking place. And in America, from birth until death, each meat eater consumes around 3,000 land animals and thousands of other marine animals. Those are USDA stats. And I seem to think a lot of people eat animals because we've all been told that humans are carnivores. We're omnivores, we're meat eaters, and we're supposed to be doing this. Are you aware that physiologically, the human body is actually 100% herbivorous? plant eaters. The length of our intestines are somewhere between 7 to 13 times the length of our torso, our trunk. That's the same length of all herbivore animal intestines on this planet. They're very long. But the length of the intestines on real meat eaters, hyenas, coyotes, bears, tigers, and lions, only 3 to 6 times the length of their torso. They have a short intestinal tract so they can push through quickly decaying and rotting animal flesh, animal protein, cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids, which is why it is impossible, I repeat, impossible for any genuine meat eater to ever clog their arteries. Never happens to a real meat eater. What's the number one killer of humans who choose to eat meat, cheese, milk, and egg? Heart disease from clogged arteries atherosclerosis. Humans and other herbivores, we sweat through our pores to cool ourselves. We don't pant like dogs and cats and lions to cool ourselves down. No claws on the human hand. Claws are a trademark of the carnivore and the omnivore. We have carbohydrate digestive enzymes in our saliva. <coughs> Only herbivores possess that, meaning we're supposed to be eating tons of carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables. Our teeth, Broad, short, blunt, flat, just like the teeth of other herbivores. And before somebody blurts out, hey, Gary, what about these canines, dog? Most of the herbivores have canines, incisors, and molars. It would not be possible for them, for us, to be eating hard fruit like apples without those teeth. Our lower jaw goes from side to side in a grinding, chewing motion like this. We grind and chew when we eat. If you grind and chew when you eat like you all do, you are an herbivore. The jaws of carnivores and omnivores can only go up and down, vertically, rip and swallow. There's no chewing, grinding, side-to-side -side action. Flat-out, bold-faced lies. Let's come to an agreement on the dairy industry. And let me know if I'm being unfair with this. I want to know. According to the dairy industry itself, the main reason they exist is so you can get calcium. Fair? Is that not their entire claim? Eat some cheese, drink some cow's milk, strong bones, strong body. Milk does a body good. Got milk? Check it out with the USDA in America. We consume the most amount of dairy on the planet. Right here, you can't even get a sandwich anymore without cheese. We put cheese in every nook and every cranny of every single food item. We put it inside the pizza crust now. We put cheese on top of salads too. You can't even get salad anymore without cheese.
And if you'd like to find salad minus the cheese, what's the first thing people say to the waiter? Hey, uh, can I get some ranch or some Thousand Island? Can you pour some dairy on these vegetables for me? So in this society where everybody is hooked on cheese, I mean hooked like it's been laced with weed, crack, <laughs> ecstasy, morphine, and the antidote. Most people can't even fathom one meal, let alone one day or a lifetime without cheese. In fact, if you want to know why vegetarians never go vegan, Cheese. Cheese on a baked potato. Cheese on a broccoli. Cheese on everything in sight. Even lactose intolerant people eat cheese. And I don't care what anybody says about this, they might avoid straight up cow's milk, but slap a double cheese pepperoni pizza down in front of a lactose intolerant person, no hesitation, right down the hatch. So we got all these animal products coming into our diet. Do you ever wonder why there are no less than three TV commercials being run for calcium supplements? Actinel, Boniva, Citricat. You've got to be kidding me. Calcium supplements in America? How come there's osteoporosis at all? How come at the vitamin stores, I say plural stores, because when I travel the country, four meat eaters pull me aside all the time and say, Hey Gary, we eat meat because you get everything you need from meat. All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients. Well, how come in this meat, cheese, milk, egg eating society that we all live in, every city has not only one, but two, three, four, five, or six vitamin stores? How come Rite Aid, CVS, and Walgreens now have complete vitamin sections too? With a whole shelf devoted to calcium supplements. I thought everybody was getting calcium from the animal products. That's what the meat and dairy people said. Newsflash, you don't. How come when I talk about mock meat, I always catch a handful of people in every crowd, and we got a big crowd today, so I stop counting at about eight or nine. How come there's always a handful of people that wrinkle up their noses, make big wide eyes, and start glancing at the people next to them across the aisle like, soy chicken, is this guy crazy? Soy bacon, he must be out of his mind. How come this stuff that is made of soy, wheat, vegetables, grains, and spices, no chemicals, contrary to the lies being spread about these products by the meat and dairy industries, how come this stuff is considered gross to most people, but meat? Meat's got five components. Let me break it down for you. Blood, flesh, veins, muscles, and tendons. The cut up corpse of a dismembered body. How does meat not qualify as gross and disgusting to everybody? How in the world is a beverage? A liquid that oozes out of the udders of cows, a secretion that drips from the mammary glands of another being that's loaded with pus, by the way. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the pus in your cow milk. It'd be my pleasure when you hook machines up to the udders of cows three times a day to suck them dry. Those machines cause massive amounts of infections on the inside and outside of the udder. Now let's add all the bovine growth hormone they put in cows to make sure they produce huge quantities of milk, which always leads to another infection. The machine doesn't know what not to suck out. Pus, mucus, and infections right in with your milk, and yeah, milk is pasteurized. But when did pasteurization become a removal process? It's a sanitation process. You're only sanitizing pus. And if you want to look this up online, well, you don't think the dairy industry would ever use the word pus when they write about this problem in their own trade journals. Yeah, they're going to deceive you again with this. Look up the scientific term for pus, somatic cell count. And by the way, our government, the USDA, they allow the dairy industry to have a maximum amount of one eyedropper full of pus in every glass of milk. Drink up. Does anybody know what an egg actually is from a hen? And don't say embryo or aborted fetus, not even close. It's unfertilized, so it can't be either. Hen is a female, though. Unfertilized egg through a female system. It's part of her menstruation cycle. It's a hen's period. People scramble up hen periods in the morning, and all of a sudden, I'm weird because I don't make omelets anymore. And what about vomit? Oh, we're going to take those blinders off today. Come on, you guys love vomit. You adore it all over your food. Better give this one a pretty name, though. No one's going to buy and eat vomit. Unless we call it honey instead. 
Honey comes directly from a bee's stomach. It is regurgitated right through a bee's mouth. Look it up with any wildlife biologist. But nobody wants to eat bee vomit nut Cheerios. We want honey nut Cheerios. So we hire ourselves to play euphemism games. The standard diet of a meat eater is blood. Flesh, veins, muscles, tendons, cow secretions, hen periods, and bee vomit? Now we're not done yet. I am not going to let you off that easy while I got you here today. You know we top this all off, in my opinion, because every November, during that certain holiday people love so much, people take a dead turkey, open up the dead turkey's ass, or carve out a really big hole in their ass, take some stuffing and shove it inside their dead empty ass, and use their little dead ass as an oven to bake some bread. Somebody else's dead, empty, bacteria-laden ass to make bread? Ass bread? <laughs> and people think vegans are weird? Because we eat tofu and rice and beans and lentils. for dinner and I'm a happy guy. I know how most people are though, I tell them this, they're like, but well, you just eat yams for dinner? I don't know man, it's kind of weird. Okay. But somebody else's rib cage sitting on your plate isn't weird, doesn't make you think twice. Severed legs, sliced up thighs, and mutilated breasts sitting on your plate doesn't make you think twice. And you want to know why? Those blinders are on nice and tightly, aren't they? I am not here to be your enemy. I am here to call you out, though. You might have had a pretty good excuse before I got here of being uninformed and misinformed. Okay. That's fair. Honestly, well, I was the same way for a long time. I'm kind of curious, though. What's the excuse now? <laughs>